Hello everyone, it's me again. Welcome all to another session in Heart America TV. Today, we're going to speak about a very requested topic, fertilizer management. This topic can get really complex, but let's learn the most important general aspects. First, what we need to know in order to keep our crop healthy and with good nutrition. All plants require essential elements to grow healthy. These elements are grouped into categories, the macronutrients and the micronutrients. Macronutrients are required in large quantities. Usually, when you buy a fertilizer, we can look for the NPK content because nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are very important macronutrients and usually are required in larger quantities than the rest of the nutrients. Micronutrients are required sometimes in very little quantities, but all of them are essential and plants cannot live without them. But how do we apply these nutrients in hydroponics? There are two general ways to do it. We can do it with traditional hydroponics, which use chemical components to provide nutrition to our crops and organic hydroponic fertilizers. These are based on nutrients derived from organic plant animal material or natural mine compounds. In order to understand how to provide nutrients and maintain nutrition in a hydroponic system, we first need to learn there are a lot of hydroponic systems, but we can group them all in two categories, the closed systems and open systems. Closed systems are systems where water or nutrient solution is recirculated. We can continue to use the same water by providing the correct management. Water soil quality for this system is pretty important, as well as the continued use of nutrients and pH in order to provide the best nutrition to our plants. On the other hand, we have open systems. Open systems are hydroponic systems where nutrient solution is not recirculated. In this system, drainage must be discarded and only reuse it after the correct cleaning and adjustment, meaning new solution must be always used in open systems. There are very particular crops that work well with open systems, and these are crops that need drip irrigation and substrates. Then, which are the steps to follow to do a correct management of nutrition in hydroponic systems? First, we need to always, always, at least for commercial applications projects, test the water source. A bad source of water can cause a lot of problems in the following steps that you can see in here. Can cause problems on uh, regarding maintaining the easy levels when making the nutrient solution and can make a nightmare of the management across the crop cycle. And what we need to check about the water source? We need to understand alkalinity levels that are recommended for hydroponics. We need also to know how much salts the water source has, because we need to have more nutrients and maintain the recommended EC levels for the crop. We need also to check the pH. If pH is high, we can experience a very difficult maintenance because the pH will tend to go up very quickly. If you are looking to understand better this aspect, I totally recommend to check our video of water source. You can find this on our channel. If water source analysis is showing any problems with the parameter I just mentioned, we must correct those problems before providing nutrition to the plants. High levels of pH are very related to high carbonates, and high alkalinity or carbonates can be downregulated with AC treatments. 
when cells are very high, meaning high electrical conductivity, we must apply the use of filters, such as reverse osmosis, in order to reduce electrical conductivity. If we ignore this step, your nutrient solution will end up with very high EC levels after applying the nutrients required by the crop. And high EC levels can affect the nutrient uptake, causing deficiencies. Another option is if your fertilizer or the nutrient recipe provide enough information and provide all or some compounds separately, you can adjust the nutrient formula, reducing the nutrients that are already present in the water. Here is an example. In Horde Americas, we offer a spreadsheet you can use in order to adjust your formula. Our leafy greens fertilizer must be completed with calcium nitrate and magnesium sulfate, making possible to adjust the formula based on the water source. This provides an advantage over other fertilizers. Here you can see an example of the water source. So you will be able to put here all your data from your water source. In a spreadsheet, you can play around with the quantity in milligrams per liter from different compounds, such as the Hort America's fertilizer, calcium nitrate, and magnesium sulfate. This way, you can see how the total PPM will end up in your formula. Just remember, PPM and milligrams per liter are the same. But how can we know if the total PPM is correct? That's easy. We also share the recommended levels for different nutrients from different sources, such like the University of Arizona and Cornell University. Then you must check your final PPM looks similar to the recommended levels. Once you have your solution ready, you need to work on the system maintenance. This is applied to closed system where the water is continually used. Remember, in open system, we usually discard the drainage. There are two ways to adjust the system. You can do it automatically or manually. The easy way is to have a good system that can automatically deliver acid or the required fertilizer in order to adjust pH or electrical conductivity levels. We offer in Hort America this kind of system. But we can also do this manually. You can use a pH and an easy handheld sensor in order to gradually introduce new nutrients to keep easy levels or acid in order to regulate pH. Usually we use phosphoric acid, nitric acid, or citric acid for organic systems. And plants don't take the same amount of nutrients every time. So we must test the water solution at least once monthly. This is to check if a particular nutrient must be increased in order to maintain the original PPM. And don't forget to calibrate your sensors. When we apply the correct nutrient management, we can avoid unwanted nutrient deficiencies due to the imbalance of pH or nutrients. You can enhance your crop quality and yield, and more important, you can avoid all the expenses that comes as consequence when you don't check the water source or you don't treat your water when it's needed. Are you looking to learn more? Fertilizer management is a big area providing big opportunities to improve production. This is why we have put together a live short course for you. Next short course will be on June 26th and registration are already open. Remember, the more you know, the more you can manage. This is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.